Hello everybody, I'm Heroes of the Greeks and thank you all for joining me today with a uh, mod spotlight uh, campaign overall for the uh, yeah the pedal or the raffle spots a campaign. Uh, the mod is called Demetrios Poly uh, Polycartus. My I'm sorry for my mispronunciation of this one. Um, but what this mod basically does, uh, this campaign sort of follows the uh, the advance or the yeah, the, the the campaign of the uh, son of Antichinus, who of course was the one of one of the commanders from Alexander, and there were a whole lot of Diadochi wars that concerned the uh, the Antichinus family. And here we got Demetrius Polarecris or Demetrius Antichinus, uh, the son of Antich Antichinus, etc., etc., and. This basically this campaign sort of converts his campaign and wars with the Diote. Um, basically what it concerns is are there three factions. Uh, the three Diote factions, the uh, Demetrius faction from Macedon, who he has controls Macedon. We have the uh, Lysimikos faction, but sort of is the uh, Kingdom of Thrace, or I'm not sure what this is called. Um, yeah, this is just Lysimikos. I'm not sure what this family is called, but I'm just going to sort of call it the Diadochi of Trace, and we also have the Ptolemaic uh, uh, faction that is uh, down here, has a little bit of territory, but of course, in normally they would have had more. But again, um, this is the Ptolemaic faction, um, still led by Ptolemy himself, so he's still alive. I'm pretty sure at this point, although I'm not too sure in that. And we also got a, a couple of minor factions. Who are basically uh, trying to survive this turmoil uh, warfare? Of course, if you play like maybe a teeny or Spartans, you could use this uh, time to maybe um, uh, maybe yeah, hold your uh, build yourself up and yeah, like sort of revolt against them against Diote rule and build up your own kingdom in the Greece. So. That is something that that happens. They also implement a couple of new units for some factions. They also have renamed a couple of them to more historically accurate. Although it certainly doesn't help with my pronunciation of some of the words. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little, little look at both Lysimachus campaign uh, map situation as well as Demetrius. And then we're also going to take a look at all the units. As well as sort of watching a little bit of a battle that I played uh, in, in advance to sort of show off the units models they have, uh, they have changed them a little bit as far as I've seen so and it looks cool some of the new units they implemented for the faction so let's take a look at the campaign and um, yeah let's go also if you want to know more about actually these Diochi uh, wars check out the uh, playlist series that I will put a link to in the description below from Kings and Generals that really nicely explains a lot of the Diochi Wars what I think is a really interesting uh, playlist it is really fun and yeah great great fun to be honest and I also really love that channel it's really great but all right let's go to the gun uh, pay map of Demetrius so oh, here's what you start off with you'll start with a sort of a little bit of an um, yeah a little bit of an introduction about what your things are, so although no talk of course, but certainly interesting. And um So yeah, yeah certainly have these there sort of your situation is being explained as Demetrius. Certainly interesting as well they've done that. Certainly looks good. Mm-hmm. And of course, you have less chemicals in uh, in Asia Minor with his large armies. We're certainly going to try and take your holdings in Asia Minor. And we also have the Epirate factions. So yeah, um, the major man mainly owns Macedon and large part of Pamelis. Initially, he controls uh most of the dnc through his clients he calls the raw engineers to assist with military and civil construction army himself will excel in sieges combined with the problem or in foreign change makes the mission armies a force to be reckoned with okay so they also have like sort of an extra advantage in um sieges 
if you are commanded by the mysterious himself so over here we have these amount of uh, units you could start off with um, it is all still the normal buildings you would expect with the uh, with when you play uh, as the yeah if you play with the normal campaign setting so you should have the still the normal buildings um, as I said, you have like these new factions. You have, of course, Demetrius himself who controls all of this. And you have some situation over here. Although Ace of Mining is certainly ugh, in a really difficult situation if you think Lysimachus has all of this stuff. And you have also Ptolemy. Of course. And you are self at war with those ones. And you're also at war with the uh, Boeteans over here. And I post, basically, everybody hates you. <laughs> no one really likes you. So. Uh, you, you just have to make sure that you get your situation, I suppose, under control in this Demetrius campaign. Some of the factions are actually your client state, as you can see, so you still got some allies, but just really minimal. From what I now can see. So, um, yeah, this is sort of what you set off with, with the Lysimachus campaign. You certainly have a lot of money, considering you have a lot of armies as well. And so, that's certainly not bad. Although, you certainly have it all. Um, abandoned, and I would certainly even abandon this city because you, there's no point in defending this, to be honest. Maybe like raiding and sacking this or something with this army. I, I suppose you could do that because it certainly isn't uh, great. Like, get some mercenaries and then just uh, sack and raise that settlement or something like that, and just move on and re remove yourself actually from this set of this. This situation yet because there's no point in basically keeping a settlement that's only not that's actually worth nothing to you. Same over here, although over here it is certainly a little bit better. These settlements are easier to defend because they're on in the sea, so that certainly is an option to do. Please, what I would do is just get some of these ones, get some mercs, and just go over in samples, take samples, take samples from uh, this faction really easy, no, no difficulties. And just start causing havoc, I guess, against this uh, against this faction. And of course, now actually, oh, actually, this one you could have actually hold yourself. Now I'm actually seeing that because it's basically one of the settlements that is in this one. And now you control it totally. So actually, going from this one to Samus actually is certainly worth it, considering it is uh, in the province that you almost totally control. I guess getting sort of a navy up here and basically controlling this coast basically makes all the armies that they would have basically not really useful. Although again, you have also basically this entire front here as well that you have to fight with Lysimachus. But again, it's certainly an interesting um, campaign to play with. It's certainly something different than you would normally have. So yeah, um, that's that for Demetrius. Let's take a look at Lysimachus. Well, of course, with Lysimachus, you sort of start off with the uh, same intro. Certainly not too bad, I would say. Yeah, as you can see, you control a load of territory. Yeah, you very well might be doing that. Yeah, but I said the naval preference really uh, can help us out in that war. So yeah. Again, so if you know, be careful. Ooh. Mm. You were the border guard of Alexander. You followed him all the way to yeah. Alexander's leg is therefore rightfully yours to victory. Okay, Lysimachal Sorrel states, most of Asia Minor and the Hellespont through his kingdom he employs strict patrols, reducing bandit leads, so and has option to call a summit of generals to discover whatever to focus on civil or military matters. Armies led by the Simic himself will be less susceptible to authority based actions. Additional under units' commands will benefit from improvement when fighting other Greeks. Well, that's really useful because basically everybody are Greeks <laughs> in this one. So, when they can call all the council. Oh! Ah, okay, so if we do. Ah, go do that for the fun of it. I have no idea what it will do. What will this do? 
Um, provides several bonus, miles and regrets to civil and military developments. This effect will... That certainly is interesting. I did not like a look on that one in the Demetrius campaign. But again, that is for you guys to also find out for yourself. Not spoiling everything, but I certainly think it is really an interesting campaign. This one certainly is a bit more difficult. Although you have certainly a bit more secure situation than you would have like with Demetrius, to, to be honest. Because he has far more spread out territory than you have. If you just kill off these factions and all of these, you're basically really possibly quick able to just, yeah secure all of Asia Minor and just yeah and then expand into mainland Greece yourself. Alright. Uh that's Lysimicus. Let's take a look at the unit. Here we are with the uh, faction of Lysimicus. There are as I far note not too many Niki units uh that you could play with but like uh, I'm pretty sure this one is like a sort of new effect. It's I think it is sort of a hybrid between Thracian or sort of barbarian tribe I'm not sure what it is to be representing. Uh, okay, so these are Pannonians will always fight at his full capacity, no matter the enemy. And these are basically some tutorial swords. And um, our gamer are sort of basically the uh, yeah, king's sort of skirmishers, I guess. Like just royal pelt, has to be honest. And you have to go to space space. Still, you got some, yeah, basically some different pike variations. Uh, you actually got it also in um, ex um, increased... Uh, Peltas variant that is sort of like an elite version with more armor And you got some different engines in shock cavalry as well again having a different type of cavalry units in Pannonia so uh, Those are like for Demetrius factions uh, for Sparta There are a couple of new units. Uh, I think this one is a new one And I think those are mostly it that are new and these, I've, I'm pretty sure these ones have to represent sort of the royal elite hoplites from the Spartans. Uh, then we got uh, Lysimikos, uh, who has also a really interesting um, army setup. Of course, it's a Trajan variant. I actually played with an, uh, this one because I thought it was this one. But I started up first with this. This is sort of also a Trajan um, kingdom faction. Sort of the same. Uh, he has some really interesting Dacian um, skirmishes, but I think like Dachioi, Acantios would seem to be sort of a Thracian skirmish type. A really interesting, also really high morale. Sort of, of course, similar to Miniatures has, but he has some missile calf from the tra from the Thracians, as well as a tra uh, Thracian um, uh, shock unit as a unit. Uh, then we could go take a look at Epirus. Uh, what seem to have like the normal amount of units what they normally would have. Except to having some Illyrian variants for the melee infantry. Uh, we also have Bithynia, who are a, a mix between, I think, uh, Greek and Bithynian hoplites, and also a lot of Thracians, so that's certainly interesting. You could think of like sort of variant between all of those three, also cultures, also. Um, also Persian, so there's certainly a mix between that for the Bavinians, we have the Athenians and mostly have the same amount of units except for that they have a new Peltas variant um, for in their army as well as some melee variants as well uh, we also have the coin Batoli, Anatoli who have I think, uh, yeah they also have some new uh, Peltas units as well as some new melee units and some pike units they can also use as well as an Anatolia ca uh, cavalry unit uh, Then we have Ptolemy who has some um, I think yeah, he also has these ones as well as some new hoplites from Crete from Crete I Think this should be from Crete although I'm I'm just making that of Cyprus, I'm not too sure where these ones are uh, from. And we also have some elite pikes from the Ptolemies themselves. And of course the elephants as, as always. Uh, and then we also have the mercenary units, basically are all uh, mercenary variants you could recruit in the campaign map if you were curious about that. 
so there aren't too many but of course then again you don't have that large a variety of um, regions where you can recruit uh, certain area of recruitment units from and I think the last one we haven't discussed is the Thracian uh, faction that is, I thought this was the one that, uh, that we're supposed to be playing with but these ones are basically an Thracian um, Macedonian uh, combined unit they have like some Thracian pikes uh, as well as some Thracian um, melee variant that are sort of Greek and we also have some uh, royal hoplites who really look kind of cool and we also have some Thracian hoplites and of course Thracian Peltast so yeah, they also interest and they also have a really interesting Thracian hip uh, uh unit as well so yeah that's that, that faction uh, I will also now load up the replay and hope you enjoyed that and that was, that was mostly the spotlight for this uh, uh, overall for the uh, Rough or Sparta campaign. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, link in the description below if you're curious. And we're now going to watch the replay. Well, here we are. Uh, we basically have a uh, Macedonian faction who am I playing as, and then we got three other factions who are all being controlled by the AI. So be wary that there might be some shenanigans because of that. Uh, but here we have the Macedonian Pike line moving up towards. And I really think they have like some different helmets, like those really more metal leech type of helmets. Over here we got the flanks protected by some Hitaspes. Together with some Pannonian infantry who look uh, certainly interesting. They have uh, definitely some different armor. Like sort of a uh, Illyrian um, Celtic uh, armor variant, and then behind they have some cavalry support. Yeah, it is all going to be going around, and over here we got some of those. Um, oh yeah, those are, those are the ones, those are the melee units from the Spartans that we got here, who do look interesting. Certainly look cool. And we also have some of the their helots. Here we got some of those uh, massive companion cavalry, I would say these ones are, so... All these ones? No, these ones are the Masyon and Companion Gary. These ones are, I suppose, would be the Thessalian Gary. Although, that is my uh, uh, guess, to be honest. Uh, these are the, uh, yeah, the, the elite pikes. Uh, we also have Demetrius himself over here on his horse. Although, I'm not sure if that is totally him, but again. Uh, just think he is. And of course over here we got the army of the Thracian Basileus Lysimachus. I'm just going to get to the room he has Lysimachus. And here we got the Ptolemaic army has also been uh, advancing. Here we got some of those um, Thracian pikes. As well as some... I guess these are some Sarasari from the uh, Thracians. Here we got some of those Thracian infantry who look also really cool with that greenish color. And here we got some of those elite, uh, some of those uh, hoplites. I'm sure we got some of those. Here we got these uh, more elite hoplites. Oh, that, that, that mask is so cool. And yeah, so they're moving up now. I'm certainly trying to uh, sort of keep in line with my uh, my with my ally, but again, the AI is certainly not in not great in that. But again, it doesn't really matter in the end. Still, going to look cool with the Spartans moving up. Starting to try and fire against the enemy. They should certainly be firing now as well. Yeah, there we go. We're already getting some. Um, uh, Javelin throws in over here, but here we got the cavalry of the Ptolemaic charging against the um, Spartan javelins, and um, I'm not sure if these these ones actually are spears, so they're a little lucky that they didn't hit the right ones. Here as well, some of the Ptolemaic cavalry charging in. Oh no, these are the uh, Spartan cavalry, but again, the Ptolemaic cavalry over here is um, trying to charge again against the uh, back of the Spartan horse, so they are going to get absolutely butchered, I would say. So, uh, yeah, that certainly is going to hurt. And we're over here going to see the first hoplite lines engaging against Pike, so that is not going to go well. Although they do get a charge against these ones who were not in line, so that certainly helps them out. And, uh, 
yeah, the Lions are sort of trying to form up again. It certainly is a difficulty. And you've also got some of their hoplites charging in against others. They're more elite ones. But again, the pikes are the bane of the Ptolemaic army as well as the Lysimachus. So the Spartan are going to have a difficulty with that. And again, I am still just slowly trying to move up. Although over here we do have some uh, horses charging in against our swords. Their elite cavalry from the Ptolemies. And I think I'm also actually charging in here with my own cavalry. At least moving up to do that. So yeah, as we can see, we got our elite cavalry fools trying to uh, line up and see where they have to go and charge. I must say, this really looks interesting. You see it from here. Certainly an interesting lineup. Also, like a really cool uh, look, to be honest. Looks great, actually, from here. And here we got some charge against those nice uh, strange skirmishers. And that certainly helps us out a lot. And um, yeah, still are losing some men of course, but we are doing a nice charge. And over here we're charging against some of those. I think these ones are their tesorial spears, so they are not they're not going to do well against those. Over here as well, we got some charges in. I'm not sure what I was trying to do here, but I was trying to at least charge somewhere, and it did actually go well. Because we were able to actually knock them over. Although I don't think that went too well for us. Only getting two kills. Over here we are seeing our uh, uh, our royals. A gamer trying to fire upon them. But it is certainly a bit of a mix max. And over here we are already seeing the first um, pike lines. Really slaughtering these hop lines. They're not getting any, any kills. And over here we got pies against spikes actually. Although they're not really yet getting some good engagement in over here, so that's certainly an advantage for ours. And uh, our Arch also getting some really good uh, kills actually, some of them 80 kills. Demetrius is just holding back and holding his flank up. Over here we're actually breaking the flank because it really didn't re-engage this, but we were able to kill off some good of their, some good cav of them. And one of our cavalry also is engaged over here and just is outnumbered. Although, yeah, they didn't do too well. Over here we also killed one of those arches off with our own calf and over here we have an engagement between our pikes and some of our hoplites together with some spartan hoplites so it certainly is a mess of things trying to just get something going but again over here this is a lot of difficulties considering they have their pikes here and they're just doing a lot of damage as we can see a lot of blood on both sides and as you can see these SPS hoplites are not doing that great well. The pikes are doing kind of well. Although they have calls, they are getting um, javelin throwed by the, by the javelins. So they certainly do damage with that. But again, it just is a lot that they um, have to try and hold on here. Over here though, it should be a little bit more even because we have like pikes as well in here too. So yeah, the Spartan in this one did uh, join the Mithras here. Yeah. They might have gotten some deals, or of course their Macedon in this time period so is the hegemon of the Peloponnese, mostly I think. So that sort of wasn't, you have to obey or we annihilate you kind of thingy. That certainly is, uh, yeah, the arch is certainly getting some good kills in here. Sorry for the lag though. And there are a lot of units in this one. And they are, if you, if you actually, what I've noticed, if you sometimes play with like big battles with more players, it, the lag is lower than when you play with the AI because the AI has to do the calculating as well. And there's your computer doing that too. Well, it does help out with the overall, um, yeah, I guess, uh, thing i also do use a blood mod in this one so that makes the bodies more bloody and gory um i will also put a link to that one in the description below as well as again to the mod so the mod will be linked in the description below and um uh, here as well also a lot of blood between the our own uh, more heavy ones over here we are sort of uh trying to move around getting some against the calf and this cavalry did actually die, I think. Yeah, they won decisively. Ah, still getting some kills. Not too bad. But yeah, again, these archers just are getting so many kills. Like some of these are 130 kills. Really doing a lot of damage against all of these uh, pikes. Just getting a lot of kills in. 
And yeah, the Sicari are not going to go do good, any good against these uh, Pikes, although they are getting in. And um, these uh, Tracing Pikes are certainly looking interesting with the Pikes. Look cool, especially their shields. Though this most, yeah, I can a woven wooden shield, I'm guessing. So, against these elite um, heavy pikes, that's going to be difficult. But yeah, again, sort of these, this line over here is certainly breaking a lot. Because vehicles against fighting against the pikes and they still have a lot of pikes left. And of course, those, well, their, their pelters is also doing a lot of damage, some of them over here. And of course, one of my uh, elite cavalry also still roaming out, but getting already this one already 200 kills. So they did uh, kill over some. Uh, they did kill off some. And over here we got their uh, general actually being attacked, and uh, the pike shenanigans again are going on as well. with trying to advance with pikes, so this never been the uh, greatest of things. <laughs> um. So yeah, certainly interesting. And we're not going to charge in again against the Seponidante, or whatever they're called. Not too sure, actually. There's a lot of uh, stuff going on. Yeah, the AI certainly has an advantage over you when you're fighting these large battles, because you just have to micromanage a lot. And sometimes you do get overwhelmed, especially in the beginning. I thought, okay, where do we have to go? Like over here, this, this unit is just a sitting duck and just not actually engaging. And I think they really got slaughtered by some Peldas, because they just, they don't seem to be have been engaged. I think this mostly has been, basically, they have been attacked. And these ones as well, not doing that great. Yeah, the Pikes are just doing a good job. And is holding this line really well off. Um, and we're not really doing well on this flank at all, just because of the Pikes. But again, that is their, certainly their bone, backbone of their army. And this... This hop, this one is actually better than I thought. And as you can see, there's just a lot of uh, blood going over here, and you just see that there are breakings again over here. We also have our own archers just shooting into this blob, uh, getting a lot amount of kills. Just 160, almost those ones, even 170. So they have done a really good job, the archers. And these pelts as well, yeah, decent amount of kills. Again, they are also reasonably in battle. And over here though, they are getting probably not that great, they're doing not that great because of the pikes. And my archers are just, my curry still roaming around in the back trying to just do some stuff. And here we got also an archer shooting at this hot plant. Hmm. Nah, some of them did decent. That certainly isn't too bad. And over here, pies against pikes, just overall bloodbath. Certainly interesting looking. Come on! Ooh. Yep. Mm hmm. And we also got all of these units going to fight. My head pass base against theirs. And uh, my pikes are sort of now trying to just move up more. We also got their general down here. We got some routers in the back as well. Jeez. So overall, not too bad. And especially if like look at from this point of view, it really looks interesting seeing this entire like line and battle line. If you're like a commander, it's just damn difficult to see who and what nerve is going on. Okay, this is certainly weird. <laughs> that is a weird thing you would think would happen there. They just morphed morphed in each other. <laughs> Uh oh. Ooh. Ah. Yeah, there's a Pajeta space. Yeah, here we got a Pike and Cavalry mix up. There's a lot of bodies as well everywhere. And here we got one of my own. Uh, whole I think he's one of mine. No, I thought it was one of mine. But again, as I said, I can't really tell one unit from the other sometimes. Especially when you go in cinematic mode, just a lot of blood. A lot of uh, units are similar, of course. Well, here we are joining an uh, cavalry unit in their charge. 
actually against the uh, Ptolemaic general. And they got a nice charge in. What certainly is helping them out. And here we got some of their own heavier gamer trying to move up the scores. And I'm just trying to hold on. But again, they also getting discharged. What I'm actually right now doing is just, I'm sort of actually reforming my line. Um, like basically the line was first this and now I'm just sort of trying to reform again with my pike lane. Just trying to sort of do a new line while my enemy and my, my ally is just trying to hold on by himself. But yeah, the, the, the most of the Spartan forces have been slaughtered in this battle though. As well as the Lysimachus forces, although there is certainly a lot of it even yet. It's really interesting to see what they are going to do from here on out. Yeah, so right now I'm just trying to reform the line and uh, just hold the enemy at bay. But it is certainly working of course against uh, a lot of those ones. And a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of this fight. Some of these units just all covered in soot and blood and mud and it all over the place. Certainly, there's a bit of a slaggy line over here as well. But again, not too bad. And we got some again, this really heavy calf trying to just hold on. Well, the, the, the field is littered in blood as well. And uh, here we go and get seen again some charges by some of those heavy uplights. I think these ones are the one of the Trajan guys. Yeah, the phalanx of the rower guards in a capable force, not to co not a court regiment of course. But I give you good luck to trying to push through the pike line. And again, we've got a lot of pikes now just moving up, just holding the line. Here we got also there another uh, a gamer. Who we are actually going to charge in, or is he going to charge against us? No, one of ours is charging in, and I'm all sending in my pass space and me, my uh, my uh, phalangite uh, hope light uh, friends are just trying to hold on, but they're just getting absolutely slaughtered here, just getting outflanked all over the place, just trying to hold on, but not really working as a not just getting slaughtered. And here the pike line is still holding it. It is certainly a buggy line if you think like this. Like this, more, this looks more like a boat than a straight line. But again, it uh, it holds, <laughs> considering how it uh, went. And here we got the uh, royal uh, companion cavalry discharging over the place, killing them off, and getting getting another charge against those uh, Egyptian ones against the slingers too. Well, the line is still trying to hold to get a certainly a long line. So you also got some bikes, so it's certainly difficult for them to try and advance. Even got Demetrius on the flank commanding it still. And here we go, you see the bodies everywhere. Like it started over here, and then we just fold around it like that. And here we see this the Lloyd uh, bodies lying around from the trees until up there although if you see it from here there's also so much body piles over there and it seems my spartan ally is just yeah he's just getting around it he's just now he has finally completed his uh, sacrifice and thus my ally died off as well and uh, a little bit of confiding left though but overall it is certainly not too bad the uh, pikes are holding the line perfectly well and it is a uh, certain, almost certainly a victory for Demetrius Antigonus and his uh, fight against Lysimachus and his Ptolemaic allies. In it. Certainly a bloody one though. It didn't come off this cave to be sure. But yeah, I love the blue. I love the blue looking pikes though, although it certainly doesn't help them with their uh, attacks. <laughs> yeah, they're just now just trying to move and they're just getting absolutely slaughtered. <laughs> oh, yeah, just seeing it happening. <laughs> 
Yeah, we got uh, our archer still charging, entering, do some damage. But not really going to help, is it? Probably not, though. Here we've got all some pikes leaving in pike formation. But the line, as you can see, of the Ptolemaic Fools is slowly being destroyed over here, though. It's just, just, they just don't form up. They're just not forming up. They're trying to move forward and just getting absolutely slaughtered. Like, some, this one, like, 445 kills. Overall, not bad. It was really fun actually playing it. It was certainly interesting because it's really weird what your allies sometimes do to do. And, uh, yeah, now the their forces do rout. And that uh, brings an end to this battle. And, uh, and taking it victory. So again, I hope all of you enjoyed the mod spotlight. Uh, check it out for yourself. Again, link in the description below for the mod, as well as to the playlist of the Kings and Generals channel over the Diadoji Wars, if you're interested in that. So again, uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you're interested in seeing more articles, bye bye, and have a great day. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed it as well. Or a sub if you want to see more. That's also always good too. But again, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day. Bye bye. And I'm babbling on again. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.